Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Advantest with VJ Tangamariafan. We're going to talk today about automated optical inspection. VJ, what is automated optical inspection? What's different now versus what was there before and why do we need it now? Usually in the semiconductor industry, people do the QA inspection uh, using the manual process. So the example today we are going to see here is the socket inspection process. So the socket inspection process, the size of the socket is so small and in which it has thousands and thousands of pins. Usually in the QA inspection process, a human has to use the microscope to go through these pins and make sure whether all the pins are placed correctly and there are no defects in it. So this process has become cumbersome and it's a time consuming procedure. So it, it sometimes has some errors as well. To overcome this issue, we are proposing an automated optical inspection where it uses AI ML to predict the defects in the uh, real-time data. Let's take a closer look. Sure. VJ, what are we looking at? OK, so I'm going to explain you here as an example. But before proceeding with this example, I can give you, show you the real hardware, how it looks like. So take a closer look of this socket. This is one of the socket which Advantest uh, division called SA is manufacturing. So in this socket, if you can take a closer look, these small areas, imagine there were 4,000 pins are there. So these 4,000 pins, a user or a human has to manually go through these each and every pins and make sure there were no defects at all. So imagine how cumbersome it is, how complicated it is. It may result to a uh, uh, prone to errors or it's a time consuming process. To give you an idea how we solve this problem, here I have presented a generic model preparation, how it works. So that helps you to understand the solution what we offer here. So the first step here is for the AI model preparation, you need a data set. Okay, so the first procedure you can see here in this data set we have to collect all different defect types and each different defect types, you need to have a set of images required. So this is a very important procedure for creating the models. Are all these sockets the same? Uh, no, actually there are different sockets are, are being manufactured at the site and each socket has its own pin type. As I said, while it is so important to prepare the data set with wide variety of uh, images or the data set or the types whatever you have. So the, the data set preparation is so important you need to collect enough images for the specific defect types and organize as much as data possible. As the sockets become more dense do, do you end up with a lot more data that you have to process there? Certainly yes you need to collect more and more uh, data for that but the most important thing here is usually in the manufacturing side you might get a lot of good images. But here, for the model training, you need to have the bad images as well. So to answer your question, yes, you need to collect a more and more data set, both on the good and bad. It has to be uh, diversified so that you will get a good model. Are you running machine learning here at all? So the actual procedure is the machine learning here. Now I'm walking you through just the first step. And so that machine learning requires just as much data as you can possibly get and as much good data as you can possibly get, right? Yes, it requires both good and bad data. The data has to be uh, a mixture of data is what I'm trying to propose here. So you need to have key because the more data you have, the model will try to collect or fetch the features more, learn the more features from that model. Does every socket have to be inspected or can you now say we know what the baseline is and we can go against that? So what you can do is during the training process, you can pick a certain number of uh, sockets from it, train a model and keep few data, uh, try, uh, keep few sockets for the uh, testing or validation for the later stage. So whatever you collect for the training set using which you can train a model here, as I said, and the remaining data set, you can have it as a validation or the real time test. You can make sure the model is working. So that the model knows does not uh, test uh, trained on a 
um, a known or the real-time devices. And the key here is that you need a model with enough integrity to be able to use that as your benchmark, right? Yes. These are really small sockets. They're really densely packed. How did you get all that data? That's a very good question. So usually uh, we work with a third-party vendor. It's a big metrology hardware that has an inbuilt camera in it and zooms around like 50 to 250 micron. At that level, you can able to get a clear, crispier view of that each and individual pins. So we use that metrology hardware to capture the individual pins and collect and prepare the data set. How do you build these models? What do you have to do in order to make that all work? Right. So this is a simple, generic example how to create an AI model here. So the first step, as I said, you need to prepare the data set. So with the help of the metrology hardware, we capture all the different defect type images, pin images, and organized in a way so that we can have a different data, uh, different types of errors in the data set, right? And then you need to also prepare one, um, the data set with the real time, uh, I mean the validation set and the testing set. So the validation test helps you uh, to make sure the model is working good or not. So that is, that's the first step you have to do it. Once you have all these uh, images collected, you organize this image and the model preparation here. What is that model? Right. So here the model is something like uh, interconnected layers. All these small, small, uh, the, all these circles you are listed down here are called the neurons. So this model, generally, you need to have an input layer and an output layer. In between the input and output, there are n number of layers. It's called hidden layers. These hidden layers are in all interconnected. I do not want to complex this, so that's why I just interconnect one of the neurons here. But in the real time, all these neurons are interconnected. And it will be connected to the output layer here. right? So when you feed in the test images, set of test images, the test images will go through each and every neuron and it will learn, try to learn the features from it. And at the output layer, we can extract the result, what type of defect it is. Do you need more convolutions in, in there? What, what does that actually buy you? So if you, it's, it's between the, the model selection, how you are doing. So based on your model, you can have a, a deeper convolutional neural network or a smaller neural network. And since we are using the image-based um, model preparation here, we, may, we need a deeper convolutional neural network here. Where does this fit in the, the manufacturing flow? Where do you actually use this? So this whole procedure we are using at the QA inspection level. So that is the final phase. So before shipping it to the customer. Do you get feedback from the field as well about this is off and something needs to be tweaked here? Yes, I can give you the real-time data here. Um, in the last nine months after deploying the solution, the customer was more happy with the number of the returns. Now the returns has become zero and now customer wants the team, uh, SA team, to make it as a part of the process. How does this compare to before you were using machine learning? So before, if my assumption was right, approximately 2% of uh, sockets are where being returned from the customer side. Now that was drastically reduced to zero. So after the inspection here, what, what sort of improvement do you see in the manufacturing side? So as I said, um, number one improvement, the returns from the customer has been reduced to zero. And number two, the number of manufactured socket shipment to the customer has been increased. I can give you some numbers here. Uh, it, it has been increased approximately 40 percentage increase when compared to the previous shipment. Vijay Tengar Maripan, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.